Ever wondered how medieval bridges still stand strong after 1,000 plus years, while modern bridges collapse within decades? Historical engineering records reveal construction secrets so effective they created structures that outlast empires. These weren't just bridges, they were engineering masterpieces using techniques modern builders have forgotten. Ready to build your own Millennium Bridge using their genius methods. Part 1. The Bridge Crisis Foundation Secrets Medieval Bridge Foundations were engineered to withstand any force nature could deliver, using underwater construction techniques that modern engineers still struggle to match. The process began with Offerdam, construction building temporary walls that held back river water while workers excavated down to solid bedrock. Teams drove wooden piles deep into the riverbed, then pumped out water using human-powered devices and bucket chains. Once the riverbed was exposed, workers hand-carved foundation stones to fit perfectly against bedrock contours, creating seamless connections between natural stone and construction materials. Foundation stones were massive some weighing. Over 10 tons and positioned using wooden cranes and pulley systems. Each stone was individually shaped to transfer loads directly into bedrock rather than relying on mortar connections. The foundations extended far beyond the visible bridge structure creating massive underground buttresses that distributed weight across enormous areas. This foundation work often took years to complete, but it guaranteed that the bridge would never shift, settle, or fail, regardless of floods, earthquakes, or heavy loads. Stone selection medieval builders developed sophisticated stone selection, criteria that ensured their bridges would survive millennia without deterioration. They understood that different stone types had vastly different durability characteristics and chose materials based on specific performance requirements rather than availability or cost. Limestone was preferred for its weather resistance and workability, while granite provided ultimate strength for high-stress areas like arch keystones and foundation blocks. Master Masons tested stone quality using techniques passed down through generations striking stones with hammers to detect internal flaws examining grain patterns for strength indicators, and testing weathering resistance by exposing samples to harsh conditions. They rejected stones with visible cracks, irregular grain patterns, or high porosity that would allow water penetration and freeze damage. The best stones came from quarries that had proven their quality over centuries of use. Medieval builders would travel hundreds of miles to source the perfect stone rather than compromise on quality. Each stone was individually inspected, graded, and assigned to specific structural roles based on its unique characteristics and performance capabilities. Arch engineering medieval arch construction created self-supporting structures that actually became stronger under load, using engineering principles that distribute weight more effectively than any modern bridge design. The genius lay in the arch's curved geometry, which converts downward forces into horizontal thrust that pushes the entire structure together more tightly. Master builders calculated arch curves using mathematical principles that ensured perfect load distribution without modern computers or engineering software. They built wooden templates called centering that held stones in position during construction, allowing workers to place each stone with precision accuracy. The keystone at the arch's peak was the final piece, locking the entire structure into a rigid, self-supporting unit that required no mortar for structural integrity. Multiple arch spans distributed loads across the entire bridge length, preventing single-point failures that could collapse modern structures. Each arch was slightly different, calculated for its specific position and load requirements. The arch design meant that heavy loads actually made the bridge stronger by increasing the compression forces that held stones together, creating structures that improved with use. Mortar, magic medieval mortar, was chemically superior to modern concrete using natural hydraulic lime that created bonds stronger than the stones themselves, while remaining flexible enough to accommodate structural movement without cracking. The secret ingredient was volcanic ash or ground brick dust that created hydraulic properties, allowing the mortar to cure underwater and in freezing conditions. Medieval masons mixed lime putty that had been aged for years, understanding that longer aging created superior binding properties. They added specific ratios of sand, aggregate, and organic materials like horsehair or blood that enhanced tensile strength and prevented shrinkage cracking. The mixing process took days, 
with workers continuously stirring and adding water to achieve perfect consistency. Quality control involved testing small batches to ensure proper curing characteristics before committing to large-scale use. This mortar actually became harder over centuries through a process called carbonation, where lime slowly absorbed carbon dioxide from the air and converted back to limestone. The result was mortar joints that were often stronger than the original stones, creating monolithic structures that performed as single units rather than assemblies of individual pieces. Water management medieval bridges included sophisticated water management systems that prevented flood damage. While maintaining structural integrity during extreme weather events, the design began with bridge placement at optimal river crossing. Points where natural features provided flood protection and stable water flow patterns, arch openings were sized to handle maximum flood volumes without creating backups that could undermine foundations or create destructive hydraulic forces. Cut water design used pointed upstream faces that split flowing water smoothly around bridge piers, preventing erosion and reducing hydraulic pressure during floods. Drainage systems included stone gutters and spouts that channeled rainwater away. From structural elements preventing water penetration that could cause freeze damage or mortar deterioration, the bridge deck was crowned and sloped to shed water quickly while maintaining safe passage for traffic. Foundation protection included stone armor around pier bases that prevented scour and erosion during high water events. Emergency allowed extreme floods to pass over the bridge deck rather than destroying the structure. These water management features were integrated into the basic design rather than added as afterthoughts, creating bridges that worked with natural water. Flow patterns Load distribution medieval bridge engineering distributed massive loads through the entire structure rather than concentrating stress in vulnerable points, creating systems that could handle weights far exceeding their original design parameters. The load path began at the bridge deck, where stone slabs transferred traffic loads directly into arch structures rather than depending on intermediate support systems. Arch geometry converted vertical loads into horizontal thrust that spread forces across the entire bridge width, preventing point loading that could cause structural failure. Pier design used massive stone construction that distributed foundation loads across large bedrock areas, preventing settlement or shifting under extreme loads. Buttressing systems absorbed horizontal thrust from arch structures, redirecting forces into stable abutments that were often larger than the visible bridge structure. The proportional relationships between arch spans, pier widths, and foundation sizes were calculated to ensure that no single element could become overloaded, regardless of traffic demands. This load distribution meant that medieval bridges could handle modern truck traffic, despite being designed for horse-drawn carts, proving that proper engineering creates structures with enormous safety margins built into their fundamental design. Part 2. Build Your Bridge Site Planning Medieval Surveying Techniques for bridge construction can be adapted for modern property applications using simple tools and traditional methods that ensure optimal placement and long-term success. Begin by studying seasonal water flow patterns, observing your site during different weather conditions to understand flood levels, current patterns, and erosion tendencies that could affect bridge performance. Identify bedrock locations using metal rods or simple drilling to determine foundation requirements and ensure adequate support for your structure. Mark crossing points that offer the shortest span while providing stable approaches on both sides, considering slope gradients and soil conditions that affect construction difficulty. Use wooden stakes and string lines to lay out bridge alignment, checking measurements with traditional triangulation methods that medieval builders used for precision work. Consider prevailing wind directions, sun exposure, and seasonal access. Requirements that affect both construction and long-term usability. Document your site analysis with sketches and measurements, creating a planning record that guides construction decisions. Plan staging areas for materials, storage, and workspaces. Ensuring adequate access for heavy stone delivery and construction equipment. This thorough site planning prevents costly mistakes and ensures your bridge will perform optimally for centuries. Foundation building begin foundation construction by creating temporary coffer dams using wooden planks and waterproof clay to divert water and expose the construction area down to solid bedrock or stable soil. Excavate foundation trenches by hand. 
removing all loose material until you reach a solid bearing surface that can support massive stone loads without settlement. Shape foundation stones to match bedrock contours exactly, creating seamless interfaces that transfer loads directly into natural materials rather than depending on mortar connections. Use wooden levers and pulleys to position foundation stones, ensuring perfect alignment and solid bearing contact across the entire stone surface. Build foundation walls in layers, with each course slightly smaller than the one below, creating stepped foundations that distribute loads across increasingly large areas. Pack foundation joins with hydraulic lime mortars, working mixture deep into all gaps to eliminate voids that could allow water penetration or structural movement. Install drainage systems around foundations to prevent water buildup that could cause freeze damage or undermine structural stability. Allow foundations to cure completely before beginning superstructure work, ensuring solid base that will support your bridge for centuries. Stone laying medieval stone laying techniques create perfect fits without gaps. Using traditional methods that ensure each stone contributes maximum strength to the overall structure. Begin by cutting stones to precise dimensions using chisels and hammers, working slowly to achieve smooth faces and square edges that eliminate gaps in finished construction. Test fit each stone before final placement, marking adjustment points and making fine cuts to ensure perfect contact with adjacent stones. Apply thin mortar beds only where necessary for leveling, relying primarily on stone to stone contact for structural strength rather than mortar adhesion. Use wooden wedges and levers to position heavy stones exactly. Checking alignment with string lines and measuring devices to maintain consistent courses and proper geometry, tap stones into final position using wooden mallets, avoiding metal. Hammers that could damage stone faces or create stress concentrations. Clean excess mortars immediately using wooden tools and water, maintaining clean joint lines that shed water effectively. Work in small sections, completing each area entirely before moving forward, ensuring quality control and proper curing before adding additional loads to the structure. Arch construction build wooden centering first temporary curved supports that hold arch stones in position during construction until the keystone locks everything together into a self-supporting structure. Create arch templates using flexible wooden strips bent to the exact curve calculated for your span ensuring precise geometry that will distribute loads properly when complete. Cut arch stones called voussoirs with angled faces that follow the arch curve, making each stone slightly wedge-shaped so they lock together under compression. Begin arch construction from both sides simultaneously, working toward the center to maintain balanced loading on the centering supports throughout the construction process. Place each voussoir carefully against its neighbors, checking fit and alignment before applying minimal mortar that fills small gaps without providing structural support. Install the keystone last, using careful measurement and final fitting to ensure it locks the entire arch into rigid, self-supporting configuration. Remove centering supports gradually after keystone installation, monitoring the arch for proper load transfer and structural integrity. Test the completed arch with gradually increasing loads to verify proper performance before proceeding with additional construction work. Finishing touches complete your medieval bridge with finishing techniques that protect the structure from weather damage while maintaining the authentic appearance and performance of historical construction. Install coping stones along bridge, edges using large, heavy pieces that overhang the bridge face, creating drip edges that shed rainwater away from structural elements. Apply lime wash or natural stone sealers that protect surface stones from weather damage while allowing the structure to breathe and release moisture naturally. Build approach roads using stone paving or gravel surfaces that provide stable, well-drained access to your bridge without creating erosion problems. Install simple handrails if needed, using wrought iron or wood construction that complements the medieval aesthetic while providing modern safety features. Create drainage channels along bridge approaches to prevent water from undermining the structure during heavy rains or snowmelt. Apply protective coatings to any exposed metal elements, using traditional methods like linseed oil treatments that prevent rust while maintaining historical authenticity. Mark your completion date using carved stones or metal plaques, creating permanent records of your construction achievement for future generations. Testing methods medieval load 
Testing verified. Bridge safety using systematic methods that can be adapted for modern construction to ensure your bridge will handle expected loads safely throughout its service life. Begin with visual inspection of all joints, checking for gaps, cracks, or signs of movement that could indicate construction problems requiring correction before full loading. Apply test loads gradually, starting with lightweight materials and increasing systematically while monitoring the bridge for deflection, cracking, or other signs of structural stress. Use temporary load tests with known weights like stone blocks or water-filled containers positioned across the bridge span to simulate traffic loading patterns. Monitor arch behavior during loading, ensuring that increased compression creates tighter joints rather than causing separation or movement between stones. Test water management systems during artificial flooding, verifying that drainage works properly and water flows clear of structural elements. Document all test results with measurements and observations creating permanent records of bridge performance that guide future maintenance decisions. Establish load limits based on test results, ensuring safe operation while maintaining adequate safety margins for unexpected loads or structural changes over time. Modern applications today's builders can adapt medieval bridge principles for garden bridges, farm crossings, and small-scale applications using modern materials while maintaining the engineering wisdom that creates permanent structures. Concrete can replace stone for smaller projects while maintaining arch geometry and proper load distribution. Modern hydraulic lime mortars recreate medieval performance characteristics. Steel reinforcement can supplement traditional techniques. Without compromising the fundamental design principles, the key insight remains unchanged build for permanence rather than economy and creates structures that work with natural forces rather than fighting them. Subscribe for more medieval engineering. Secrets that revolutionize modern construction.